Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, I've got a fountain pen showdown for you. We're going to be taking a look at two pens from Pilot. Both of them have got gold nibs. The first one is this. This is the Pilot Custom Heritage 92. It's actually the first gold nibbed pen that I owned. And that's going to go up against the Pilot Custom 823. Both glorious pens. I really enjoy both of them. What we'll do, we'll take a look at the bodies. We'll look at the differences between them. We'll do some size comparisons, some weights and measures, a writing sample. Then I'll give you my thoughts and some scores for each of these pens. So here we are down on the mat. The two pens we're looking at the Pilot Custom Heritage 92 and the Pilot Custom 823. The Heritage models, these are the ones that have got the flat ends, whereas the plain custom ones, they've got that more classic cigar shape. And this is what you see in a lot of Pilot pens in this range. We'll start with the 92. As I said, we've got a flat top. We come on down and it tapers out slightly We've got a silver coloured clip, which is nice and springy. I'll use my other hand, then we can still see the spring. I like the silver colour. I like that because it goes well with this black transparent colour that we've got in the pen. The cap, to my eye, is tapering up until we get near the bottom of the clip. Then there's still a little bit of a taper until we come to this ring here. And if I turn this around, let's see if we can get where it starts. We've got Custom, Heritage, 92, then Pilot, Japan. And then we're back to the start. The cap then tapers down and we've got a slight drop off, a noticeable drop off, you can feel it, down to the body. The body seems to be the same width all the way down to we're virtually the end of it. In there we can actually see the threads for this piston mechanism. And then we come to a silver ring and then we've got the mechanism trigger there. I'm not going to play with it, there's ink in here already. I like this colour, I like the black transparent. One of the things I don't like is the mechanism. The mechanism here, it goes down and it takes up nearly half of the barrel. So that's ink capacity that you're losing. but that's the same with all piston fillers, so it's just something to be aware of if you get a piston filling pen. Let's look now at the 823. The 823 is definitely a longer pen. It's more of this cigar shape. So at the top here, we've got a nice dome, you know, cigar torpedo shaped dome that tapers up very quickly. We've got a wide cap band, much wider than we see on the Heritage pen. We've also got a gold clip. The clips of the two, they are different shapes. We've got here Pilot, then we come down. We've got a ball at the end. Whereas on the Custom Heritage 92, that's more of, I don't know, maybe like a sword type shape. The clip on here nowhere near as springy as what I've got on the 92. One thing to bear in mind, I have had the 92 nearly two years, whereas the 823, I've had that about 10 months. So this has had a lot more wear on it. And that could be why that clip is a little bit springier. The cap, it's a tapering cap, so it tapers out. Again, until we get near the bottom of the clip, then it seems to be straight. Then we come down and we've actually got a thin and then a thick band. On the thick band we've got custom, 823, we've got some stars, pilot, made in Japan. The bottom of the cap, so we come on down, it tapers off again and there's a deeper drop off from the cap to the body. Very noticeable this one. The body same width then as we keep on going down come to another gold colored ring and then we've got the end mechanism this is for triggering this this pen is 
a vacuum filler. Again, I'm not going to trigger the mechanism, but what would happen is you would unscrew the end cap, pull it out, which would draw this metal rod here. Hopefully you can see that. That would draw that up. At the bottom of the rod is a plunger. You would then slowly push that plunger down till it gets nearly to the bottom. And what it's doing there is building a vacuum up behind the plunger. You get to the bottom, the inside of the body slightly widens, and then that allows this vacuum to release, which draws the ink up. Quite an ingenious mechanism way of doing it. The blind cap here, that then you would push down, and what that does, hopefully, let me unscrew the cap for a second, hopefully you can see this. So this is with the blind cap shut, see where the plunger is. As I open the blind cap, that plunger comes up. And what that's doing is that's actually creating a seal between the section and the body. So when this is shut, if you should have an issue where you have major difference in pressure or temperature, that would cause some of the ink to come out. The worst you can do is lose whatever's in the section. What's in the body remains where it is. The downside, though, of this mechanism is if you're right in the way and this cap is closed, you've got no ink going from the body into the section. So you have to remember to release this. And it's one of the things, I know I've said this with a few vacuum pens, I always forget to do it. Right, we've taken a look at the bodies. Let's take the caps off. So with the Custom Heritage 92, we go, there's one turn, one and a half turns, just under two turns to take off that cap. With the 823, we go one turn, again, maybe one and three quarter turns this time. So both of them, really nice, don't take many turns. That reveals these nibs. So taking a close look at the nibs, what we can see is there's a definite difference in size. With the Custom Heritage 92, the nib is a Pilot number no. 5 size, whereas with the 823, that's a Pilot number no. 15 size. Both the nibs look quite pretty. I like the way they're engraved. The 92, it is a 14 karat gold nib. It's just been rhodium plated. That's to match in with the rest of the trim, which has also got that silver looking colour to it. Personally, I don't like it. I would have liked to have seen the gold. The other big difference between the nibs, the Pilot Custom Heritage 92, that's a medium nib. The Pilot Custom 823, that's got a broad nib. The sections, I've tried to line the top of the sections up here. They're both the same size. They've both got what looks like a very slight conicalness to them. They're both comfy to hold. My fingers, they do fit in quite nicely. My thumb is not touching the threads at all. Let's use the 823 as well, just to show that one. The 823, when we look at the measurements, is a wider pen. The section is also wider. It does feel a lot more comfortable when I'm holding it. Let's swap these out and we'll fetch in and do some size comparisons. For my size comparisons, what I've done is I've brought in a Pilot Metropolitan and Alami Safari. These are two pens that I use in all my videos. They just give a rough idea, and most people have either seen or used at least one of these pens. The Custom 92, as we see, roughly the same size as the Metropolitan, at least when the cap's on. Slightly smaller than the Safari. The 823, definitely the longer of the pens. And I've got to be honest, it's the most comfortable of the four pens on show to hold and to use. Let's take the caps off and look at them uncapped. With the caps off, what I've tried to do is line them up so the top of the nibs are in a line. Again, the Custom Heritage 92 and the Metropolitan, very similar in size. And I've got to be honest, I need to use both of these pens posted. Otherwise, they do feel a little bit uncomfortable in my hand. The Safari and the 823 there's very little difference now in the size. Where there is a difference is in the nib. I would say the Metropolitan's nib, certainly in length here, is ever so slightly shorter than what we're seeing with the Custom Heritage 92. And both of them are very similar in size to the Lamy Safari. Whereas the Pilot Custom 823, 
that nib makes it stand out. Let's post these pens now. With the pens posted, the Custom Heritage 92, slightly shorter now than that Pilot Metropolitan, and the 823, again, slightly shorter than the Lamy. Just gonna move these two comparison pens out of the way. Let me just show you these in my hand. So this is the Pilot Custom Heritage 92 posted. Feels all right. As I say, I often use this when it's posted. I can use unposted, but it does feel that just a little bit too small for me. With the 823, the 823 again is usable posted. It's got a nice length to it. Doesn't feel too back heavy. There is a little bit of weight on there from the cap, but not enough really to cause any issue. But I find this pen unposted is a joy to use and this is how I tend to use this pen. What I'm going to do now is fetch in some size comparisons for each of these pens but in the same price range as the pen. So we'll start with the Pilot Custom Heritage 92 which is what's in the middle. The pens that I've brought in here is a Leonardo Magico that was 260 Australian dollars and a Diplomat Aero which was 263 Australian dollars. The Pilot Custom Heritage 92 was 270 Australian dollars. So, you know, within $10 of each other. Big difference is the nibs. The nibs on the Leonardo and the Diplomat, they're steel nibs. Whereas the nib here on the Pilot Custom Heritage 92, that's a 14 karat gold nib. Size wise, you know, that Pilot, Definitely the shorter of the three pens. Let's take a look at them unposted. Unposted, again, I've tried to line up at the top of the nib. The Pilot, definitely shorter of the three. As I say, I need to use it posted. The other two, I get away using unposted because they've got just that little bit extra length to them. Let's pop the caps on. With the cap on, same story. That Pilot ever so slightly shorter than the other two. But this time, the Leonardo, that's just got that extra length over that Diplomat. We'll swap over now, and we'll look at some pens with the Pilot Custom 823. The two pens that I've brought in, I've got a Visconti Van Gogh, and that was 343 Australian dollars. I've brought in the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande, that was 377 Australian dollars. Then we've got the Pilot Custom 823, which was 394 Australian dollars. Again, the big difference here, the Visconti and the Leonardo, both steel nibs. The Pilot Custom 823, that's got that 14 karat gold nib. We've got a number five size nib here on the Visconti. We've got a number six size nib here on the Leonardo. Then we've got that Pilot number 15 size nib on the 823. The Leonardo Memento Zero Grande, big pen, definitely bigger than the other two. The 823 and the Visconti Van Gogh, the 823 ever so slightly longer, but not by much. Let's take the caps off and look at them unposted. Unposted, again, trying to line up the top of the nibs. You can see here the sizes. We've got the Van Gogh, then we've got the custom 823, then we've got that Leonardo going up in size. The widths are also increasing. We can see here thin, middle, and definitely wider on that Leonardo. Let's pop the caps on. With the caps on, exact same story. We're going up in size as we move down. So we've got the Van Gogh, the 823, then the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande. Let's move this out of the way, and I'll fetch in the rule of measuring. Here we've got the rule of measuring. We'll start with the Pilot Custom Heritage 92. So it's length. That comes in at 13.6 centimetres. Unposted, we get 12.2 centimetres. Posted, we've got 15.2 centimetres. If we look at widths, the width of the body is 1.19 centimetres. The cap is 1.41, and then with the section, we go from 0.98 centimeters up to 1.06. Quite a thin pen, to be honest. 
with the 823. Length is 14.8 centimeters. Unposted, we get about 13.1 centimeters. Posted, get that to sit straight, we get 16.3 centimeters. And again, with widths, the body on this is 1.25 centimeters. Doesn't seem much bigger than the 1.19 of the 92 but it feels a lot wider the cap that's 1.49 centimeters again ever so slightly wider the section the narrowest point is 1.06 centimeters and that goes up to 1.13 centimeters these are little tiny amounts but they make such a difference in using the pen let's get this out of the way and we'll fetch in the scales of weighing so here we have the scales of weighing. We'll start with the Pilot Custom Heritage 92. So the full pen, 21 grams, quite light. The cap, 8 grams. The body, 13 grams. Let's look at the 823 now. So the full pen, 30 grams. That's 9 grams more. It's noticeable. The cap, 10 grams. The body, 20 grams. The body alone weighs nearly as much as the entire Custom Heritage 92 pen. Let's get this out of the way. What I'm going to do now is fetch in the notepad of testing. Here we've got the notepad of testing. This is an A5 notebook and it uses the Oxford Optic paper, which is a really nice paper I find for using my fountain pens on. This bit is always better I enjoy. I always enjoy the writing samples. We're going to start with the Pilot Custom Heritage 92. So as I say, I find I need to use this one posted. So we've got here a Pilot put Custom Heritage 92 medium nib. The ink by Van Diemen, nice Australian company and it's Apple Island Green. Now, I'm not sure why, but with this pen, I tend to just use green inks. And I could use any color ink because it's a black body. You know, there's very little limitation, but I don't know what it is, but greens, I seem to gravitate towards them and this pen. We'll look at drying times. I'll do this bit unposted. So this is immediate, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute. Still quite wet after a minute. I'm gonna go down onto the next line and we'll go for two minutes. After a minute, in fact, after two minutes even, we've still got some smudge in there. I'm going to move the mic down to the paper and write a sentence. I like writing with this pen, that the nib, very soft, very bouncy. We'll look for some line variation. So that's no pressure. This is with some pressure. Going across, very similar, no pressure. And then do some S's. See here, we have got a slightly wider line on my downstrokes. Flow test. Keeps it really well, the flow's there, no issues with that at all. Let's move now and we'll write with the Pilot Custom 823. Now, before people start saying, Gary, you should use the same ink, 
it's a different ink. So yes, we've not got an exact like for like comparison. With these pens, I use them in my day to day life. I don't just ink them up to do a review. I'm using them day in, day out. So I put in inks that I like using in that pen, not inks that will be consistent for the review. So I know a number of people have commented on this in the past. So I just really wanted to make that clear. Just gonna move this paper up ever so slightly. So we've got here a Pilot Custom 823 with the broad nib. The ink is by Diamine. and it's Tobacco Sunburst. Drying times, we've got immediate. Oh, still got a bit of green on my finger there. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. Still quite wet there at 30 seconds and I remembered to use a different finger to wipe it off. One minute. We'll go down to the line below, two minutes. Again, after two minutes, ever so slightly smudging still. We'll move the mic and do some writing. Line variation, well, there's no pressure. Here's with some pressure going across, and then let's do some S's. Flow. It's another nice pen. The nib on this though does feel a little bit stiffer than what I see on the Heritage 92. But remember the Custom Heritage 92, I've had that for about 18 months longer than this pen. So it's had more time to be used for me to bed that nib in. I'm gonna slightly reposition the paper and fetch in both the pens. So what are my stars and thoughts for these pens? I enjoy them both. I keep both of them inked up all the time. They're always in my pen case, ready to be used. As I say, I've been tending towards using a green ink in the Custom Heritage 92. I think I may need to change that. I might need to try some different colors. With the 823, because it's a brown pen, I tend to use brown inks in here. So I like to go for a bit of that matchiness. Again, maybe I need to push myself and try some different colors. You never know what you might get. Pen looks, let's pop these both together. I like the look of them both. I like the black transparent material of this pen. I think it looks quite, it's quite classy. So it's a pen that I could quite happily take to a business meeting. I could say the same for the 823. I'd quite happily take that to business meetings as well. I would actually wish there was a wider range of colors in both pens, but certainly in this Custom Heritage 92, it's a lot cheaper than the 823. In fact, I didn't even put the prices on, did I? Let's pop the prices on just so we can see them again. So we've got $270 for the Custom Heritage 92, as opposed to 394 for the 823. Yeah, we're talking $120 difference in price. That's a big difference. I like the way they look. I wish the nib on the 92 was the gold color rather than that rhodium plated but again i'm being very picky because if it had been gold plated it wouldn't have matched the rest of the trims so it would have looked a little bit daft anyway so in terms of pen looks i'm actually going to give these both nine out of ten i think they both look really nice i enjoy looking at them as well as holding them and writing with them let's separate these out again writing experience with the 92 that does feel short and posted. I need to use it posted. 
I don't like using posted pens, very personal choice. So in one respect, I just wish this had been that little bit longer. It's a narrower pen. It feels narrow when I'm holding it. It's not a pen I can use comfortably for long writing sessions, which is the opposite of the 823. The 823, so comfortable to use. It's really nice. It's such a pleasure. The nibs on both of these pens, the nibs, they're nice and soft. The 823, that currently does feel a little bit stiffer than the nib on the 92, but I put that down to the 18 months extra use on that 92. I enjoy using both of the pens. I'm just going to fetch in my Gale and Leather notebook. This is 52 GSM Tomoy River paper. So we can see here, this is with the 92, with the same ink. You can see loads of the character coming out. I mean, this was done a while ago. I've, I wasn't dating them back here. But when I did this, I've since filled the pen with the same ink a couple of times. If I jump forward, here's the 823, again with the same ink. This was from a couple of months ago as I'm filming this. And again, I've filled this pen again since then. But look at this gorgeous shading. We saw that on the other paper. Let's go back now. We can see the shading coming through on both of these. You know, if we look at the sentences, we've got glorious green shading here, all these different tones. Similar here with what we're seeing from the Custom 823. So in terms of the writing experience, I am going to differentiate slightly because of the thinness and the shortness feeling of this pen. So this comes in at 8 out of 10, whereas the custom 823, that comes in as 9 out of 10. Inkflow had no issues with it. They both write nicely, as you can see in my tests, you know, even in my scribbles. The scribble here, you can still see the shading coming through, which isn't as obvious here with the custom Heritage 92. I'm going to knock down the 823 because, again, it's very personal and it's normally Gary being daft. I often find the pen stops writing because I've got this closed. So I have to constantly remind myself to open it up. But that's the only issue I have with it. Neither of them have had any hard starts or skips, as long as that's open and flowing. Really nice to use. But again, I'm trying to separate between the two. So I'm going to give the 92 9 out of 10. And because of the issue with remembering that cap, I'm going to give the 823 an 8 out of 10. Value for money. Always the interesting question, isn't it? With the Custom Heritage 92, it's not too bad for a gold nibbed pen. My cheapest gold nib pen from Japan was $200. So it's in that same, I'm going to say same price range, $70 more isn't, but it's close enough, especially when you compare it to most other gold nib pens. I think for $270, there's a lot of prettier pens out there. Yes, most of them are steel nibbed. You have to be aware of that. So we're not doing like for like comparisons. I enjoy using this when it's posted, but I don't like posting pens. So that again, feels a little bit down to me and unposted, it's too short. This was my first gold nibbed pen and I think it was a good choice because it's a gold nibbed pen that I still have inked up. The only two gold nib pens I have inked up all the time are these two pilots. I've got a Sailor and a Platinum. The Platinum nib just so stiff I very rarely use it. The Sailor it's the Pro Gay Slim so it's a little bit on the short side even when posted. So I don't tend to reach for that as much either. But value for money for the Custom Heritage 92, I'm going to give that an 8 out of 10. Different story for the Custom 823. It's still a nice pen. It writes well regardless of paper. It's a nicer feel in my hand. But it's $394. That is a lot of money for a fountain pen. Or certainly in my opinion it is. I've got to wear that in. You know, I can get the 92 for 270. I can get the Platinum, which yes, I know I don't quite like the nib on the one I've got, but I could try different nibs. The Platinums are $200, so I could have two for the price of 1823. It doesn't really matter because I love using the pen. But value for money for this pen, I've got to say, because of such a high cost, I can only give it a 7 out of 10. 
which means for these two pens that we've looked at today, the Pilot Custom Heritage 92 with Van Diemen Apple Island Green, that comes in with a star of 8.5 out of 10. The Pilot Custom 823 with Diamine Tobacco Sunburst, that comes in at 8.25 out of 10. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Which of these pens is your favourite? Is it the Custom Heritage 92? Or is it the Custom 823? I've got to be honest, I really enjoy both of them. I love writing with them both. They're both so nice and they're both constantly inked up. Why not drop a comment down below? What do you think about these pens? Are there any other similar ones that you could recommend that might be worthwhile me putting on my to buy list for any future purchases? Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.